the wonderful pastor to give us the fruit of today. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Can you just begin to appreciate the Lord? Thank him. Give him thanks due to him. Depending on the miracle you want today, depending on the testimony that you want today, depending on what you want, I tell you, church, it's not in the hand of the Lord to measure what he's about to give to you. It is in your hand. It depends on the prayer, the praise that you give unto him. The Bible says, be unto you according to your faith. Be it unto you according to your faith. Be it unto you. According to your faith, Shababa, Kiraba, give him thanks, do unto him. Give him thanks, give him praise, Shakaboria. He is worthy of our praise. Aborobo Shemborogudu, Ribaba Baba, He Karakateria, He cannot fail, He has never fell. He will not fail. Lord, we give you all the glory, we give you all the thanks, we give you all the adoration, because there is none like unto thee. None can be compared with you. You are the beginning, you are the end. Without you, we can do nothing. Without you, we are absolutely nothing. We are here because it is you that will it and act in us according to your good purpose. We are strong. We are standing today because of your grace. We are alive today because you have forgiven us. We are walking in strength and in faithfulness because your glory has enveloped us. Lord, we thank you for our brother, brother Michael, who has started driving his car. Very soon, Jimmy will start driving his car. Are not very soon, his mom too, and everybody will have enough um, vehicle to pick members, to pick people from every part of Australia, I mean every part of uh, South Australia, to bring them to church in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this increase. Thank you for the faith of your son, Michael. Lord, I decree and I declare, for having, oh God, made this move, oh God, Lord, his next car, oh God, shall be greater and better. Lord, you will give him the kind of car that he need for the propagation of the gospel. Lord, I pray that Jimmy will start his own so that I'll stop driving, i stop bringing my own car to church. Because if Jimmy starts driving, he'll be driving me to pray for Australia. And when he finish, he'll bring me back home. The same way I've been doing to him, it will be a time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the payback time. Lord, thank you for this progress in the name of Jesus. Amen. Bless everyone. Bless the world that is coming out of the mouth of your servant. Cause it to be a fruit. As for me, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, Lord, be acceptable unto thee. That we might do only one thing, that which is the will of Jehovah. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, amen. Sit down, church. I want to a kind of teach on the fourth step towards hearing from Jehovah. But before I do that, I want to recap why we started this teaching. This teaching came from a bigger topic, unrealistic, of the world's realities. There is nothing anybody says that is real that can be realized. There is nothing on earth. There's nothing in heaven said by anybody, proposed by anybody, projected by anybody. If I can hear myself a bit more, that would be great. You can increase it a bit. That can be actualized or realized. Except, that's good, thank you. Except those things that has connection. Those things that have connection with either Jehovah or his word or both. Why? Anything the prime minister promise you, anything the government of this world promise you, anything your father, your mother promise you, anything that even your bishop, your archbishop, your apostle promises you without that is not in line with the will of God, 
cannot be realized because of the following reasons. One, by strength shall no man prevail. Two, it is unwise to trust in man because of the wickedness of the heart. Three, man means lies. Man means lies. That is why the Bible says, no man shall see the Lord. Lies cannot see God. Man, everything about man means death. Everything about man means temporary. Everything about man means limited. Good success is unlimited. It passes through after it goes to posterity. It goes from heaven to earth. I mean, it goes from earth to heaven. When time shall time no more, it keeps on going. Imagine people like Apostle Paul. Forever. After everybody dies now. Now, Apostle Paul has died so many years ago. Yet, we still talk about him. We still use this as an example. He was a leader. Who is a leader? A leader is whom you remember in time of challenges. A leader is a character that you remember to lead you out of any challenge. That's a leader. So look at Apostle Paul. There are successes. We are made even before now. We are still singing it in heaven. We we'll still sing it. Now the people you respect here, the artists, are actors and actresses that are going, you know, okay. Mm -hmm. so, so. Praise the Lord. The actors and actresses that are, you know, when you see them, even they are dressing. They look insane that you are looking onto because they are pulling crowd. What happens when they die? A lot of them. Okay, what of heaven? They will not be hard. Praise the Lord. Thank you for being faithful to your assignment, understanding, and hearing. When I didn't even know that the microphone was down. But because of your wisdom, God bless you, son. We are all proud of you. Can you put your hands together for the technical department? It's not easy. There's no way we would have done it without you. So everything about the man making the promise to you is lies. How then will you realize it? You can't realize what he said. It doesn't matter who he's saying. If he's saying it without God, if he's saying it without... See, yes, another thing I saw, though it was a joke on Facebook, but it's very, very serious. I have to learn my lesson. One security man at his gate. You know, Nigeria, we have security men. They stay at the gate. Say, all you people that are calling God, God. All your prayers will come to me, not to God, because you are calling God, God. <laughs> I think I'm making that mistake too. I make, make I call him Chineke, you know? <laughs> My own, <laughs> Jehovah. That is why I don't want to. Yeah, I say, get man, sorry. So all my prayers have been coming when I say God. Amen. Mind how you try to, you know, follow the place you go. You know, you know where you go. Is the son of that place that you see. But be careful not to make that son that you are seeing your God. Does that make sense? God said, I am your son. Anywhere you go, I'm your moon. So if you already, if you already have your God that is your son, please, just be careful. I'm just trying to say people that are African, you know, they want to bleach themselves with their language to be white. <laughs> May God help us. Amen. Why is it that this cannot be realized? Earthly principles are against the realization of the truth. You can find this in Hagar. You cannot. By strength shall no man prevail. It is unwise to trust in man because of the wickedness of the heart. Man, which is lies, can't see God. Earthly principles are against the realization of the truth. It is not fun fair trying to realize something that you are seeing, something you think is real. It's not fun fair. It is warfare. So because of these five reasons, don't ever try to realize anything in this life or beyond without God and without his promises. For with God, all things are possible. Now, the central thought we want to have in this, in whatever we are doing today, is that the devil starts stealing at the first level, which is works.
But the Holy Spirit starts at the third level, which is truth. He came. The devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came to give us life, one only. Now the Bible says the works of the flesh. The works. The devil starts with the works. And the fruit of the Spirit. The Holy Ghost starts with fruit. So what does that mean? That's a central thought. We want you to understand that. In as much as you want to realize something that somebody has told you that is real, Holy Ghost will not start helping you until you start bearing fruit. Your fruit will determine whether the Holy Ghost will get involved or not. But before you get to the level of fruit, there are two levels first. Flesh. Works. Seed sowing. So these two levels, which is the level of the flesh, God has already given you power to do it. You don't need the Holy Ghost. He has given you authority and power to do it. We are the ones that walk. Jesus said, I must walk. It's a faith without walk is dead. Am I making sense? What I mean is, why it can never be realized is, the devil that is your enemy is working to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Now, whom do you think will help you if you want to succeed? Holy Ghost. If devil start now stealing, Holy Ghost will not come in. Because God has already given you the power to walk, which is walk. If the devil comes down to kill you, Holy Ghost will not come in. Because God has given you the power to trample on snakes and soft scorpions and to overcome all the powers of the enemy. It's now when you start bearing fruit. When the seed you have sown work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Start bearing fruit, then you see Holy Ghost will appear. Are you getting it? So have this mindset. Whatever you want to read, that is why people give up easily. At the first level of works, show me your faith, and I'll show you your f- work. Show me your work, and I'll show you your faith. God is asking you. He says, show me your faith, I'll show you your work. But people miss it. Do you know what people do ordinarily when they understand the person of God, not the principle of God? Principle of God is different from the pers- person of God. Principle, principle of God says, whom? To whom I have mercy, I'll have mercy. But the principle of God said, do you know what the principle of God said? Also, every man so that is what he will reap. Am I making sense? I hope I'm not confusing you. The Bible is divided into two. The principle of God and the person of God. The person of God is the king. The principle of God is his kingdom. Controls his kingdom. The person of God, we see mercy. We see, but no one thing. God is of a purer eyes that we can, he cannot behold iniquity. The person of God cannot behold iniquity. If he sees iniquity, we consume it. The person of God is our Father which art in heaven. The principle of God is let your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. The person of God is he owns heavens. The principle of God is that the earth he has given to sons of men. What controls the principle of God is sowing and reaping. Sowing and reaping doesn't control the person of God. The person of God is supreme. But because there is a time that this earth is going to end, when Jesus will come the second time, he said for the time beginning and the end of this earth, his personality, his word, he will lift his word above his personality. Which means, listen very well, listen very, very well. If you are a soul trader, you have your company, you just registered as a soul trader. If your company, it kind of fails to do what the government wants, they will arrest you. You, because you are the soul trader. The risk, every risk is on you. But if it is a limited company, if it is a corporate company, registered, it means even if you are bringing the whole money, there will be COE, there will be manager. Does that make sense? 
If anything happens, they will not come and hold the COE. They will hold the company. The kingdom of God is like God's company. Does that make sense? It's the world. And God himself, don't ever bring God in if anything is happening in accordance with the word of God. Whatever you sow, you reap. uh, uh, Sin is a reproach. What is reproach? You will always be complaining, having problems. A nation that has refused to accept God, you will always be having reproach. Things that you never expected will keep on happening. Don't blame God, but righteousness is also a nation. All those things, do you know the one in charge? It's not the person of God. The only place the person of God came into the Bible is where he said, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. That's the person of God. But I'm here to tell you that from now till Jesus will come and give him back the kingdom. He said, don't worry, I'll get back the kingdom and give it to you. The person of God cannot come into play. Leave the person of God. Our Father which art in heaven, stay in heaven. Just stop wasting your time. <laughs> he can't hear you. He said, go to my word. And I started teaching about, you know, our works starts with fighting the devil against stealing Jehovah's promises towards us and killing our visions. We are the ones that walks through the Holy Spirit. We are the ones that walks through the Holy Spirit on behalf of the Father or Jehovah. Holy Spirit walks. Holy Spirit walks when we bear fruit in bears fruit in us according to the measure of his sowing. The power and the ability to walk is locked up in us. The realization of the realities of this life and beyond starts with your walk of faith, knowing and practicing the truth. Unrealistic. Now we came to a place and said, we have to start setting up the steps, which is one of them is what I'm going to teach. Steps towards realizing the realities of life. Steps towards, step to realizing the true realities of life and beyond. Number one, whatever your eye sees is not real. Whatever your eye sees. These are the concepts you have to have at the tip of your finger. And this is confirmed in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. For what we see is temporal. But what we don't see is forever. So if you make up all these steps I'm teaching, I'm going to teach the first step. But I want you to know the first step is, have it at the back of your mind. If you have all these things at the back of your mind, and when you think that something want to promise you, hey, um, Jimmy, do you see this? Look at the devil. The devil came and said, Jesus, uh, you see the whole world is mine. Just bow down. Or the prime minister will say, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Uh, uh, be working on Sunday as against your principle. Uh, um, the whole money you need to uh, build your house, everything, you get it on Sunday. I was watching one of the, you know, I don't, what I watch is like leaders, presidents. Have I told you why I watch about presidents? What's the reason? So that I'll be able to advise her. Can you say it with the microphone, please? If there is, I want, I want the world to hear it. What's the reason why I read about leaders? Why I read about American president? I read about Russian president. I read about the success, uh, uh, Arabic countries that are succeeding, are succeeding in their leadership. What's the reason? Where's the microphone? Yes. What's the reason? The reason is, um, you said you're, you want your daughter to I be a president. I hope you're not sleeping. Be alive and say it. Say it like a living human being. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You want your daughter to be a president? No! My and, daughter is going to be a president. Yeah. And you want to be... President a, of Biafra. And it will be very, very... Can you reduce this too high? Can you... It, it, and, and it will be very unwise, okay, that when she comes and says, Daddy, ah, I'm so worn out. I'm so flat out. I don't know what to do. The problem we are having with the, with the Americans now, I don't know how to deal with it. Highest, I will tell her, give me 24 hours to pray about it. To seek the face of the Lord. 
But first, the heart of the wise studied for answer. So, do you know, there was this American president. He wasn't choosing. I don't need to mention his name. It was just because of the evil they wanted to achieve. They wanted to achieve that evil in the White House. So they looked and said, who are we going to appoint the president so that we will manipulate him? We will use him? So they went and appointed somebody that was not qualified to be the president. That's how God works. I think that was how God picked me too. <laughs> They say, pick this one. The devil always goes and say, Let, let's allow this one to be the, the one that we sent to Malaysia and Australia. We will pepper him. He's a very foolish man. So that was how they chose that young man. And that young man didn't read anything about politics or anything. So when they brought him in, his first day, his first day, he went to the toilet when he heard that he's not the president. Just went to the toilet to, because everything was overwhelming. He, does, he, he didn't know where to start. He not, nothing. He wasn't. In fact, just went to the toilet to somebody look at him and say, they, They've chosen you to be president. I wish you know where, where they've brought you. Looked him at the face. He has already been announced to the whole American that he's the president. He looked him at his face, and this was the guy that was press secretary to the former president. So he knows everything. He knows what he's saying. He looked the president at his eye because he knew his office. I said, they've chosen you to be in this. Just go and buy a burial ground for yourself. Buy a coffin. He said, why are you saying that? He said, because you cannot offer anything. You don't know what it takes to be a president. And the first move the man did was what showed that he was going to succeed. He said, were you not the press secretary? He said, today, as the American president, as the current American president, you are now my press secretary. So you are going to be the press secretary of the president that is going to fail. <laughs> he left. <laughs> are you seeing it now? Wisdom. So this man has been having a lot of chat. I think there's a microphone that is on. That's why I'm having a Check out the microphone, anyone that is on office. Choose him. Say, you are going to be the press secretary. Say, let's start with you. This was somebody. Now, tell me the truth. What would you have done? Would have sacked the person. He told him the truth. Actually, that guy was the one that woke him up. Godly criticism is a good advice. Is accepted. He said, really? Let's go. And the guy now said, me being a press secretary of president of fair, is that I resign or we'll succeed together? So his sources have started. His sources have started. Now, church, what am I trying to say? This man, all his life, everything, there will be a time they will tell him his political advisors because they have different, different offices that support them. They will tell him to lie. This is politics, lie. He said, no, I will not lie. So at a time, the people that are really knows how to play the game, the cabinet, the brother vote of no confidence and say he has to resign. So either he fight it the hard way or he just resign and take the glory of the success he has made so far. But the man insisted. He said, no, let's go hard way. I'm telling you, all the ex-parties around him. But you know one thing that meeting brought out? All the people that want him to resign were all the people he trusted. And because in American law, if, they've said, if the cabinet prepares to remove you, if they prepare to remove you, nobody that knows about it will share with the president. So that was the only thing that protected them. He said, Mr. President, but you are aware of the law. We can't tell you. We have to keep it secret. The man came into the court. Everything they were saying, people he spoke with, speak, people he, he shared something with, people he did, uh, like now you can be, you said, oh, I'm tired of this job. I don't think I can go on, on any longer. They brought it there. He said, but you were my friend. I said it because I trusted you. They brought it, you said, you are not qualified. You said it with your mouth. Look at people. 
They've bribed him. Now, do you know why this case was going on, everything was happening? The final stage, the president said he doesn't need any lawyer again. They said, what? He came out. He said, why is everybody, why am I even defending what I never begged for? That was what he said. Why am I defending? I never campaigned to be a president. I never ever planned to be a president. Why am I de- defending? He said, see, see how stupid I am. And he said, everybody is saying whatever they are saying because they want to say it. But the only reason I know that I am here is that I want the best for America. I'm coming now because they called me to be their president. I will not disappoint them because of the few of you, the cabinet that is trying to destroy what. As a matter of fact, I've already written my letter to the vice president because the person that will be the president is the vice president. I've already asked the vice president because there was something they wanted him to do. And they say, if you do it, we might consider allowing you. But that thing is illegal. They were promised. He said, I've already told him. If there's no legacy that I left, which at least I left with the legacy that I didn't sign this corruption. He said, please, I have some work to do as the president. Until the last minute, until you take your decision, I'm still the president of America. And I will still do the right thing. I'm telling you, if you see the kind of lobby that came, lobby you to tell you that because he was not approving all the... And the man left. So, so, they, said, they said, no, I'm done. I have some work to do. I still have... Your decision will be in the next four hours. I still have four hours to do my job as its president. I will not disappoint American, American people. He went to his office. Before four hours... The vice president that was, has already, she has already been rejoicing that she's going to be the next president. She walked into his office. He said, Mr. President, I'm here to tell you that the decision has been made. He said, let's go over, let, let's go over it. Let's. He said, Mr. President, they said you should continue. He said, no, don't tell me they said I should continue. Tell me two things, only two things, why they said I should continue. They said, number one, one of the greatest reasons to know a leader is to see that all his leaders are saying one thing. All his subordinates, every department. When we are going through this case, none of your department, no one department you appointed, they were all ready to die with you. And they were saying, if what I did is betraying America, I will betray America again and again under the leadership of this president. And the president said, what is the number two? He said, the number two is that America has found out that there has never been any president as honest as you. So because of these two things, continue. He wasn't qualified. But the enemies that choose him so that they will use him to pull down America and pull down the, everything, this young man has succeeded in pulling them all of them down. And they are the ones that came to the cabinet and said, we have to remove this man. And the man now won with honesty. Honesty. That's why I keep on reading about them. That's why. So whatever your eyes see is not it. The journey to discovery, to discovering Jehovah, is the journey of self-discovery. Number two, we need to see we need to see and understand him through the eyes of our mind. Whatever you see with your eyes is wrong. Number two, see Jehovah and his promises with the eyes of your mind. Not with your physical eyes. You make mistakes. Number three, a lifestyle of Sisoi, which is the characteristics, the it, in instruction, the deception, and the consequences. You have to understand the characteristics of a, a lifestyle of so CD, uh, seed soy. Don't just go into seed soy. When I want to sow seed, before I sow the seed, I'm a very grumpy man, very unhappy man. But immediately I sow it, boom. Immediately I sow it. I'm the happiest man. Do you know why? It's a thing of the spirit. 
the flesh cannot allow it. But what happens? Your flesh will be pushing you. That's why you get grumpy. That's why you get unhappy. But immediately you saw you. Holy Ghost will say, I have won! His future is secure. And you see the joy of the Holy Ghost. It will envelop you. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Was the not fourth one? Hearing from the mouth of Jehovah. What's the first one? Can we cross it? First one, whatever you see is not real. Number two, if you really want to see Jehovah, you see him with the eyes of your mind, not with his eyes. Don't try to give these eyes a lot of things. How many of you have observed when I'm doing something, I close my eyes? Because I'm not seeing with these eyes. I'm seeing with the eyes of my mind. You can never understand Jehovah. Because imagine Jehovah now. If you see him, he's no more real. Because whatever you see with your eyes is not real. You only see him. That is why you cannot see him. You can only see him in the dream. Because that you're using your, your eyes of the mind of the eyes of your mind to see him in the dream. It's not the eye, your physical eye. And number three, see so you. And number four, hearing from the mouth of the Lord. I want to lay a foundation so that in the evening I'll do the proper thing. Can we quickly go to, who can remind me um, what really made, what really made um, devil to leave Jesus for a time when he was tempting him? Who can remind me? Who can remind you? I can show you where it is. Luke chapter 4. What really made devil to leave Jesus? You know, remember, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, took him after his baptism, sent him to the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. But the devil did not leave him until he made a statement. Is that when he said, instead of it is written, it is said? Beautiful. But can you, can, let's get it and see. Look, it should be Luke chapter 4. The first one was in three or four. The other one was in eight. The other one was in twelve. Let's see if I'm right. Luke chapter four, verse twelve. Two and ten. And Jesus, mm-hmm. and Jesus answering said unto him, "It is said." That is it. The other ones he was saying, "It is written." It is written. Now, church, he had. This is, can you put your hands together for yourself? Because you have really learned a lot. Many people that are saying that the Bible is wrong, they are, read, they are reading the written word. And even the Bible says, it kills. If you live your life only eating the bread, for men shall not, know by, by, shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. If you live your life only knowing the written word of God, Logos, you will end up not producing anything, not producing anything, and you will die. Apostle Paul says, is, uh, where is it again? Was it in, uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 19. He said the purpose of the written word is to kill you. And when you keep on reading the law, the purpose is to kill you. When he kills you, then you now resurrect. That's when you are crucified with Christ. What does that mean? It's not alive. It's only alive. I was sharing, I was trying to make it very simple for my family to understand the other day. I said, why do you see the Bible wrote in, can you get it? Um, Busha Kaboria, 4 verse 12, Hebrews. Read it for me. Shikabara makura ketere bukuri, bahabo bukuri amahagada shakate, hara kataya kataya hara. For the word of... Can you read like a living person, please? Not like a written word. Amen. For the word of God is quick. Is quick. And powerful. Powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword. And sharper than any two-edged sword. Pierce, I was, mm-hmm, continue. 
piercing even the dividing asunder of soul uh -huh. and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Do you know in my own paraphrase, if for me to paraphrase what he said, he said the word of God will enter, the real word of God will enter into everywhere, search everywhere, your bone, your marrow, your everything, search it, even your brain, discernment, everything, marrow. If you hear the real word of God, boom. Now I was explaining it for my family in a simple term so that glory will understand it. I said, glory, do you know why the word of God is active, powerful? There's no mistake in it. There's no lies in it. There's nothing, there's no weakness in the word of God. Now, it's only alive and active because of one reason. I use an example. I say, look at Australian law. Australian law is weak in so many places. Australian law has put some people in prison that didn't do anything. Australian law has people that are still supposed to be working, they have reduced them to center link receivers. Because Australian law cannot descend the heart. The Australian law cannot enter into the marrow, the bones. Am I making sense now? So Australian law is just like reading the Bible without life. Okay, I can give you an example. Jesus said, um, I, I came with peace. He came to another place. I said, I came with sword. You'll be confused. You'll just turn around two times and fall and die. You don't understand what is happening. How can Jesus say, I am peace? With me, you peace. And he came another place. Matthew chapter 10, verse 34. He tell you, I'm sword. I came to defy. I came to destroy. I'm against peace. You can't. I was explaining to my children. I said, that's how when you read the Bible, without the power of the Holy Ghost. But when you read it with the power of the Holy Ghost, what happens? Okay, you are, let's say you are judging somebody now with the Australian law. And you are judging the lawyer is too good to interpret the law to fight. And the lawyer brought out so many things that will make you not as if the lawyer. It will only, the lawyer will bring out points that will make you keep quiet from saying the truth. Because if you say the truth based on the evidence he has brought, it will become a lie. That's how they win. That's how a good lawyer wins. A good lawyer will make you sh not to say the truth. Let's say maybe there was a time, um, maybe I fired you. But there was a time I made a statement and said, Jimmy tendered his resignation. And I said, never will I. But that was before. So the lawyer will go and search out that. And when I say, I fired you, the lawyer will say, okay, look at press conference. The one you said you said, how many people were there? It was only me and Jimmy. You fired me. Now look at the one you said to the whole world on media. So who is lying now? He's only trying to make the point. But that's the truth. You have been fired. He fired you. So these are good, what good lawyers do. So in that area, that lawyer knows that what he's doing is not right. He just want to win his case and make his money. So the people that are right will not be wrong. And people that are wrong will not be right. But in the Lord of God, it's not like that. Do you know why? Holy Ghost. That is what it means. Is alive and active. Alive and active is Holy Ghost. Does that make sense? Do you think I've made it clear? How does faith come? What is the power of the word of God? What is the, uh, the, the machine that makes the word of God active? Faith. Is that not true? So how does faith come? Let's go to that place. Okay, think 10, 17. 10, 17. If I'm not mistaken. No, Romans. Romans 10, 17. Are you there? So then, faith cometh by hearing. Good. Have you heard it now? Faith cometh by the hearing of the hearing of the bread of life. Continue. And hearing by the word of God. Now, see, see. Hearing and the hearing, not all. Hearing or hearing. It means another thing. Does that make sense? But when you say hearing and hearing, it means another hearing. Am I right? Hearing or hearing means either you hear from the word of God or you hear from the Holy Spirit. It makes that faith. But this one says, faith comes, read it again. Is there any comma before and? 
yes. double emphasis. Yes. So then faith cometh by hearing. Is there any comma? Yes, comma. See now, double emphasis. To tell you the mean another hearing. And hearing, continue. Yeah. And hearing by the word of God. So which means you need to hear when you read the Bible. And you need to hear from God. So how is it that the word of God is active? You don't act. The judge cannot give verdict except through the mouth of the Holy Ghost. And who is that Holy Ghost? The word of God is active. You enter. He's the spirit. The Bible says the word that I speak is spirit and life. Immediately the word is coming. Look at what he did to Ezekiel. Is it not a word that is active that can leave somebody? He came and hijacked. He said, hey, hey, leave me, leave me, leave me. Don't pull me. I'm not wearing pants. You leave me, leave me. <laughs> The word of God lifted, jacked him up. He said, let me wear my panto. I don't want God to see my nakedness. He was, he was active. Alive. And if you want every word you speak, let it be the same word that is written in 6 verse 63 of John. Can you read it, sir? Remember the first step, hearing from the mouth of God, yes? John 6, 63, what did he say? It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. You see now, it is the spirit that giveth life. The flesh profiteth nothing. Continue. The words that I speak unto you, there are spirit and there are life. What did he say in 40 feet? Faith cometh by hearing. And another hearing, who do you hear now? Spirit. You hear the word, then you hear the spirit too. Now, the word of God is alive and active. Why? Because it's the Holy Spirit that you should hear. Now, when Jesus was tempted, let's now use this thing I've explained to talk about Jesus. When Jesus was tempted, the first time the devil came to him, he said, it is written, no life. The Holy Ghost did not start penetrating. Look at what, are you getting now? It is written. The <laughs> Holy Ghost said, no. <laughs> Remember, it is alive, active. It can penetrate the barrel. So what does it happen? If, if that word was alive, now look at what happened. Jesus, the devil came the first time. Um, I will tempt you and tempt you and kick you, kick you, kick you, you die and kick. Uh, Jesus said it is written. The devil said, come and go and see that. Because there was nothing alive from Jesus that attacked the devil at that time. Mr. Mameke says, and the second time, the devil came again in the wilderness. And, say Jesus, and Jesus said, it is written. And Jesus began to wonder. Why is it that I will speak the word of my father? And nothing is happening. Then Jesus realized. Then when the third time the devil came, Jesus waited and said, Holy Ghost, what shall I tell him? Come on! Yeah, Baba Korea. He had. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord, thy God. And you know what Jesus now? Jesus now said exactly what he had. It is said, Come on! Shake Mokoro Mokoria. It is said. And when he said that, the uh, Holy Ghost said, Thank you for giving me the button. He now did his Votron hand. Ooh, ba 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 ba. He now touched the devil's head. Quick, come on, come on, get away. David ran. The devil ran away and said, I will come back after a time. Let me go and settle, hospitalize myself first. You know? When you speak is written, your situation will remain like that. In the house I said, he died the more. <laughs> it is written, he will die the more. When you say, I've had him, it has been said, Kabush Kibri, not through my mouth, say it. Say it, not my mouth. Say it. I'm not the one saying it. Is it not what is written there? Read it completely. Paroko to Yabaha. He became alive. Somebody said it. And that person is still saying it now. Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Read it, sir. Uh, Luke chapter 4, verse. I hope I'm not confusing you. Are you getting my message? That is why I say, you might not understand my messages now. In the next 20 years, you will know that he's a treasure. Because that time you have grown. You have started reasoning in my level. Continue. And Jesus answering said unto him, mm -hmm. It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the, the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. Continue. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him. 
He so was, that was when he departed. He tried this. He left. Even when you talk to sickness. If you talk to sickness, it is written. It cannot work. But if you hear faith coming by hearing, and another hearing, man shall not live by bread. That's the first hearing. But by every word that comes from the mouth of Jehovah, through his spirit. Imagine you are walking on the road, and you see somebody crippled, and God just said, he's healed. He's healed. And you looked at the person and said, it is said that you are healed. Were you the one that said it? I had it. It is said that you are healed. Watch out what is going to happen. The person's hand will kick, 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 kick. <laughs> Church, do you know, let me tell you Read your Bible We are in an era Where you need to start using the statistics To know The Bible says when the thunder came The Lord was not there All these things you are hearing making noise When the fire came The Lord was not there When the wind came, the Lord was not there But he came in a sweet Calm voice. That was when I heard the voice of the Lord. You don't need, I know how to move people. If I want to make you jump on this chair till church finishes, I will do it. But what will it profit me to just bring you here to entertain you and send you home without nothing? But this is the foundation God laid with Abishab Benson and Ahosa. We don't just tell people what is in the Bible. We make it very, very understandable for them to practice it. It's simple. It's a calm, still voice. It's not thundering. It's not a struggle. You don't even, it's the knowledge that changes you. It's not you. It's not you. Just be humble. Be there and be, and be, and be uh, circumcised. It's painful when you're being circumcised. But watch out after the circumcision. You have the visa to enter your Canaan land where you become a son. The place you were circumcised, you were still a servant. In wilderness, you are a slave. I mean, in Egypt, you are a slave. In wilderness, you are a servant. In your kena, but you can't enter until you are only circumcision. Allow God to circumcise you. And you are permitted, you enter into kena and start living. Land flowing with milk and honey. Church of Memory says, are you ready to apply and learn and understand how to hear from God. How many of us are ready for that? And you know when you hear from God, I'm not saying God, I'm saying God. <laughs> let, me, let me leave all this. When you hear from God, <laughs> Jehovah, <laughs> so that my prayer will now not be preaching God, God, my, God man. When you hear from God and say exactly what you hear, there's nothing that will not. I'll give you a testimony on Sunday. I just pray that God will finish what he's doing. Because I said, I just said, I didn't say, I didn't, I didn't even know, I didn't say it consciously. I didn't struggle to say it. But I said it as a man that is filled with the Holy Ghost. Something impossible just happened. It was targeting to happen in the next one month or one, one month and two weeks. Six weeks. It just happened. I didn't know how it happened. I'm telling you, this first step is so important. But this first step cannot make sense to you until you understand the first three. Anything you see, because this first three will bring into confusion. Then what will dilute the confusion, what will erase the confusion is hearing from God. What you see is not real. And if you want to see Jehovah and understand him, See him with the eyes of your mind. Life rotates on the mechanism called sowing and reaping. If you've not made up your mind for these three things, forget about hearing from God. Because you will not understand why God will know that you have not eaten and he will ask you to use your last money to go and give somebody. You've not eaten. He came to the woman with a child. I said, that's my prophet. Give him first the food to eat. How possible? How can God? Because if you don't understand how it works, what you see, what you see is a game. God is playing game with it 
for his pleasure. It's not real. The only thing real is Jehovah and his word. And if you really want to understand this God that is playing the game, the Bible says he created everything for his pleasure, for his pleasure. He's laughing. People are, people are dying in Japan in tsunami. God is laughing for his pleasure. I can't change the word of God. It's what the word of God said. Stop saying, stop using your mind to judge God. Everything for his pleasure. People are dying in suicide bombing. And God is playing his game <laughs> for his pleasure. Why? You have to understand the mechanism. Because what your eye sees is not real. Even the good life you think you have, it's not real. The success you think you have, it's not real. The only thing real is God and his promises. Now you want to hear from God. Do you know God speaks to you every day? Do you know God speaks to you every time? Do you know God speaks to you? Whenever you finish reading the word of God, God is speaking to you. What's the problem, Pastor Joseph? Why is he? What do you mean that God? God speaks to you. He's your father. He's your father. I don't see how a father will not be speaking to his children. But the problem is not God. The problem is you. Job chapter 4, 33. Give it to me. I want to lay foundation so that in the evening I just run and conclude this teaching. What is the Holy Communion? Continue. Don't worry. That's a threat. Every service will be both Holy Communion and uh, anointing service. Start from 14, son. For God speak, speaketh once, yet twice, yet men perceive it not. Are you hearing it now? Continue. It has not finished. In the dream. He speaks in the dream. In the vision of the night. He speaks in the vision of the night. When deep sleep falleth upon men. Sleep, when deep sleep. If you, if you really, if you're expecting God to speak to you, please don't eat heavy food in the evening. If it's possible. I'm telling you the truth. Take fruit and liquid. If you're expecting God to speak to you through dreams or vision of the night. Because that's the problem. Because your flesh is too heavy, enjoy after taking alcohol, beer, you know, <laughs> taking Hennekin, you know. <laughs> you eat all the Chinese food with heavy sugar in it. You eat all the carbohydrates, you know our fufu. When you eat the fufu, <laughs> when you overload yourself with the fufu, God will be speaking and be saying, okay, okay. <laughs> I say, be careful. Is that, is that, is that the cat talking? <laughs> but when you fast, your body is tired. Your body is weak. Your body cannot even stand up. You see how when you, when you are weak, you cannot, when an arm robber comes, you cannot do anything. Arm robber will look at you and say, I'm going to steal your money. <laughs> I'm going to do this. When your body is weak, fasting, or you took just lighting to give God the opportunity. God is speaking to every one of us every day. He's giving us every word that will make us come out in the day. When we see the devil, we say, it is said. Just last night. He said it. Yesterday. As I was sleeping, he told me. Alive and active. I like this song so much. And I know my redeemer. You know why I like it? The end part of it is a, I spoke with him this morning. I spoke with him this morning. And I know my redeemer why, why, how do you say, why do you say you're doing my life? He said, I spoke with him this morning. I talked with him this morning. Who knows, he came to her by dream. And told her, that pursuit, you will get it. I'm taking an exam. And I told my wife, the greatest problem I have is not getting resources to pass the exam. God has not spoken to me. You have passed, so you are going to pass. I know before I make my success, God will come a day before. Anything he will come a day before. I said, my wife, when, when is God going to tell me that I'm going to pass this exam? Uh, 
<laughs> it's not about this. I have the resources. I have it in my iPad. I have a very sophisticated way of learning it. The same way I'm going to learn it. And I say, my wife, is not about the resources. It's about God. Are you getting it? Who is he that will speak and it come to pass if the Lord has not approved it or the Lord has not spoken? So are you excited about this topic? The fourth step towards realizing the realities of life, the true realities of life. And it is hearing from the mouth of the Lord. But let me give you another scripture so that we conclude with it. Go to 8, John 8, verse 43. I'll show you something. Why do you, why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. My God, who can, who can teach us? Who can teach us what Jesus was saying there? What Jehovah? Christ was saying there. Christ, son. Well, he's saying like... You're one of the greatest pastors that this world has ever produced. See yourself that way. And always, whatever you're doing, it doesn't matter. You count one, two, three, before you become hundred. Does that make sense? One day, you sit down to listen to yourself. You will see how far God has brought you. It happened to me. You sit down and see how far but I want to tell you something. There's never a year that will come that the past year will be better than in your life. Because you're a choosing person. Does that make sense? Speak with boldness. What do you want to say? Well, he says like they cannot understand what he's saying pretty much because they have not grasped the words that he's saying. That the words itself, it's not from the flesh, but it's from God. And that's why they're not able to understand what he's saying. Can you repeat it again? No, he's talking about two things. Two things. Here, read it again. Then you see. The Holy Ghost will help you. He says, why do ye not understand my speech? My speech. Mm. Even because ye cannot hear my word. Because you cannot hear my word. Yes, yes, yes. yes. He's just okay. using, yeah. using a kind of... He's talking about one thing. But he's trying to differentiate it too. For people to understand, yeah. Yeah, they struggle to understand it simply because they're not hearing what he's saying. Okay, okay. Anybody want to try? Okay, now, listen. Faith comes by what? And what? He's trying to differentiate the two types of hearing. He's trying to tell us, you cannot understand my speech. Let's say as I'm preaching now about hearing from God. And that's why I want to conclude with this in this first session. The next session. You can never understand even if God used a microphone to speak if you don't know his word. Am I making sense now? You can't jump. Say you can't understand my speech. That is because you don't know my word. You've not read the Bible. So there's no way you can do without the Bible. In as much as at the beginning is a letter, you still need the letter and for the logos to work. Does that make sense? Now the Bible is the guide. It guides God's word. It carries God's word. When God speaks to him, it is the Bible that carries it. The words, the, li- the, ri- the written word. Does that make sense? So you can't do without that. That's what Jesus was saying. You can't understand my speech. You want to understand my speech direct. Because I've come to you in a person. Invisible, visible image of the invisible God. But you want to grab the other, But you have not studied the law. You've not studied your Bible. You've not passed through teaching. You've not passed through training. Are you understanding it now? So you have to be a disciple before you become an apostle. Jesus is saying, in as much as the major thing is to hear from the Holy Ghost, but you will never understand the Holy Ghost until you know my word. Does that make sense? So does it mean that you can do without the word of God, the Bible? You can't do without the Bible. God's speech to you will be approved by heaven and earth, will be obeyed by everything. 
after you have studied the word of God. You can't just wake up. Samuel was there in First Samuel chapter 3, verse 7. For how many years? 12 years. Study. God was speaking to him every day. He couldn't. And God said, in his word, Samuel did not yet know me. Because the word of the Lord has not been revealed to him. He was speaking. Until he was, who was the one? That was the, what Eli did. Son, when he said, speak. It was a sign of training. Samuel did not ignore the training he needed from Eli. In as much as he knew that God has rejected Eli. It's as important as it is. Apostle Paul, I've told you this. I give it to you as assignment. That's the day I will know you have really read your Bible through. It's not written anywhere. It's somewhere that Paul was teaching. That he now said immediately he had an encounter with Jesus. He now went to study under Gamaliel or whatever for three years. So immediately his eyes opened. He didn't do it. He studied under somebody for three years. How many years did the disciples study under Jesus? Three and a half years. Paul studied under another great man for three years. It was then after then he started preaching. Paul did not just immediately he got he started preaching. He studied for three years. So that's what Jesus is saying. You want to jump. You're not ready to, be, to belong to a church. You're not ready to serve on the man of God. You're not ready to be disciples. Now you want to hear my speech. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Church stand up. Shababa. I'm going to teach you something that you have never heard before about hearing from God. I'm going to make it very easy by the power of the Holy Ghost. That as God speaks to you from now henceforth, you will hear. And when the devil comes, you will say, it is said. God told me yesterday, in the dream I had him. It is possible. Even when men say it's not possible, you will say, if God has spoken, that settles it. Ibaluko to begin to appreciate him. Shabakoria for this morning's section. His name will forever be glorified. No man will share his glory. Rabako Sokotoya. Thank you, oh God, for this morning. Making it available. Giving us the fresh food. Laying a foundation that we are going to continue with in the evening. As we have our holy communion and anointing servant. Be thou exalted, be thou glorified. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus.